I'm Holly from Salonology, and when I have my spa, I use timely appointment booking software. I loved their innovative features, which helped me to deliver an exceptional client experience, build a booming and busy business, and give me the freedom to run my salon how I wanted. Their UK-based support team were always there to help with my needs, but what wasn't there was long-term contracts or hidden fees. As one of our listeners, you can exclusively enjoy 50% off Timely for your first three months when you go to www.gettimely.com and use the promo code Salonology. I'm Holly Power, and I recommend Timely appointment booking software. Hey, I'm JP de Villiers, and you're listening to The Salonology Show. Welcome to The Salonology Show, and today we have a very, very special guest joining us. This man has lived a whole lot of life in his 39 years on planet Earth. It is difficult to know where to start, and This has been the hardest introduction that I've ever had to write for this show. From sharing a stage with the likes of Tony Robbins, Jay Shetty and Prince EA, to speaking in front of the UAE royal family, to being named one of the most inspiring men in London, to publishing no fewer than four best-selling books, to running ultra marathons and Ironman events, to doing a TEDx talk, to competing in the ring doing martial arts, to staring certain death in the face when he collided with a car uh, whilst on a charity cycle ride from John O'Groats to Land's End, only to bounce back in spite of his life-changing injuries and two weeks in intensive care, to track up Mount Kilimanjaro just 15 months later. And all of that was the greatly summarised and shortened version too. This man is a professional speaker, high-impact coach, And so much more than that, too. And if you've never been a part of his world, then you are in for a treat today. Someone I'm honoured to be able to call a friend. Joining us today, the truly amazing Jean-Pierre de Villiers. Welcome, JP, to the Salonology Show. Welcome, JP. Dude, 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 I have to tell you, I'm clipping out that audio clip. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm using it as an intro for my videos. <laughs> that was so good. Please do. That is my gift Thank you very to much. you. It's the least I can do for all you've done for, for us over the years. That is without question well, the you. most powerful intro I've ever heard. And delivered so perfectly as well by somebody who <laughs> truly, truly is in admiration of you, JP, as we both absolutely are. Now, before we dive right into the heavy stuff, uh, we like to begin with something a little more fun. We like to ask these questions to all of our guests to get to know them a little better. So we've 10 quick fire questions for you. Does that sound good? Absolutely. I'm an open book. Let's go. Brilliant. Right. Question number one, Facebook or Instagram? Used to be Facebook, wanted to be Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, New York or Las Vegas? New York because I've not been to Vegas. Oh, we'll take you. Don't you worry. We keep promising this. Um, (laughs) What do you have in your chip shop chips? Definitely not fish as a vegan. (laughs) Uh, Yes, just some good old salt and vinegar. Uh, Cats or dogs? Dogs. Tea or coffee? Coffee. (laughs) Apple or Android? Apple all the way. (laughs) Early bird or night owl? Early bird. What in the beauty industry annoys you the most? Complaining. Oh, yeah, I agree with you there. If you could cameo on any TV show, which one would you join? Big Bang Theory. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Yep. All started with a Big Bang. Hey, if you could get on a plane right now, where would you be going? South Africa. Oh. Cape Town. Home. See my mother. Yep. Um, Excellent. Thank you for that. I feel like we know, we all know you're a little bit better now, but I want to actually go back to the first time that we met. And I'm going to remind you of a story now, JP, which I don't know if you remember this or not, but when we first bought a ticket to come along to one of your events, which was an event in London, maybe, ooh, how many years ago, Holly? Three or four, four years ago, maybe? Yeah, probably four or five. Yeah. And we booked these tickets to come along to this event. Holly had never seen you speak or seen any of your stuff. But I was like, look, we're going to go and see on this guy. It's going to be super inspiring. We're going to like break some wood and it's going to be awesome. Anyway, booked up. 
and we booked and paid for our hotel. And then at the last minute, the venue changed. Right. I don't know if you remember this or not, but the venue changed and the hotel was then somewhere different. And I said to Harlow, oh, my God, the venue's changed. And we booked this one hotel specifically because it was where the event was. And we were like, right, I'm going to send them a message and see what's going on. Anyway, and you replied personally, which was the first surprise, saying, don't worry, I will pay for your taxis to get you from the hotel to where the new event is. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe he has just offered to do this, which I just thought was just such an incredibly nice thing to do, given you had no idea who we were. You probably thought, who is this total ass? <laughs> anyway, we came along to the event. And as it turned out, we had a brilliant couple of days and we ended up at that event um, signing up for your retreat to Thailand, which I'm pretty sure wouldn't have happened had you not built up, maybe unbeknownst, just so much goodwill with your gesture in the first place. And I don't know if you remember that story. I don't know if you remember any of that happening or not. It's just such a testament to the character that you are. Man, you've just given me such a beautiful reminder of how we need to keep showing up. And that's in service of others rather than of ourselves. And I remember that when it happened. I've not thought about it since, but I remember it very clearly. And I, I think it was at the Bloomsbury in London. It may, do you know, I'm not, I'm not even sure. All I remember is we were booked. I'm not even sure. All I can remember is that it happened. And it was funny because I was thinking about when I was making my notes for the show. And that's still something that I remember now. When I was trying to think back about all the different stuff, I was like, do you know what? That's still, and it's just that, you know, that first impression, I guess, and just such a profound impact right from the word go. And as you say, it obviously came from a place where you were just trying to serve, which I know is something you always talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and that just shows, hey, you were li living what you preach right there. I remember Ma Amanda, who was doing the event organization for me, part of my team, said, oh, there's this couple, they've come into London just for the event, and they've actually got a hotel at the event, and, and I just felt terrible. I just felt terrible, and I just said, look, we'll, we'll pay for their taxis. So the fact that you just brought that up, like, for it, I think it was about four years ago. I'd even go yeah. as far as saying it was five years ago. I think it might have been about five because years ago. Because the last yeah. two years have gone crazy fast because of well, my accident and COVID, but yeah, great, great, great memory. Yeah. And great moment. Something else that sticks in my head from that particular event, actually, and one of the exercises that you got Ryan and us to do and, and how powerful it was. Do you remember this? Where we had to go through all these different words and hone down what really resonated with us and our values. Mm. And I think it started with 500 words each and we had to break it down to like 100 and then to like 50 and Five. 20. Yeah. And in the end, we had to go down to 10 words each. And this was quite a big thing because me and Ryan, you know, we were fairly newly married and we were kind of, we were just building up this business. And um, out of the 10 words that we both picked, six were the same as each other. Were they? Yeah. No way. Yeah. And I always remember First thinking, of all, that's impressive so that you remember that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't remember what the words were. Jules and myself are like, H -h -h why are we together again? Because <laughs> 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 all I mean, of us are different. <laughs> and of course, the outlook on everything, as you say, it was very different there, uh, then rather. And as you mentioned, lots of things, huge events, particularly in your life have happened since then. In May, May, 2019, everything changed for you. Are you called for us to talk about that for a minute? Oh, hundred percent. Tell us, tell, tell us what happened because, um, it was something at the time when it happened, we, we, we kind of shared it because it, it really touched us. In fact, Holly said earlier, we remember full well where, where it was we were. One of those moments in life. I remember we were in Mexico and Ryan was, I think he might have gone to the gym or he was in the bathroom or something. And he came back in. And I said, oh, my God, oh, my God. Have you heard what's happened to JP? And Ryan was like, no, what? And, and I read in the story and we were just absolutely gobsmacked. And I remember the first thing I did, I messaged Jules and said, just let us know anything we can do. We're just down the road, you know, shout. And it was it was like when you hear one of these big, really big moments in life. And it impacted us that much because it was just devastating so it was a sponsored bike ride john agrotes to land's end right and it was the final leg ironically right well it was the eighth of 10 days okay so we were cycling for charity we had sponsors i had a backup vehicle it was me and one of my clients 
And a lot of a lot of the work that I do as a coach is I help people lock in and commit to goals that they know are so much of a stretch that once they can achieve that goal, there's no way they can be the same person that they were when they got in touch with me. And this goal for this person was, I want to cycle 1,000 miles across the UK's longest length. And I want to go from the north of Scotland to the south of England uh, to Land's End. It was meant to be 1,000 miles in 10 days. And on the eighth day, uh, everything changed. When I was hit head on by a drunk, uninsured, disqualified driver in a hit and run accident and literally flown off the road, bike smashed into pieces and left for dead. Unbelievable. And then I spent, yeah, I spent two weeks in intensive care. I spent seven weeks in hospital. I broke both of my legs in multiple places. I've got metal rods, not plates and and screws, I've got metal rods through the inside of my bones, keeping my legs together. And then I've got plates and screws in my right arm. I had heart trauma, lung trauma, collapsed lung, punctured lung, um, bowel surgery. To put it this way, um, I woke up and the first thing the doctor said to me was, you're very lucky to be here. Mm. I mean, just seeing, I remember just seeing the pictures and, um, and I can remember also, I remember very, very clearly. And I, and I said to Holly, I said, there is absolutely no way in the world that he is not going to bounce back even stronger than before. I just <laughs> knew instantly. I was like, this is going to be one of those turning points. There's no way in the world that he's going to slip away one night or anything silly like that. No chance in the world. And then as you say, after a very, very long route since here you are before we just started you've just told me you've run three half marathons this month and four 10ks so that's bonkers as as and i'm speaking there as someone who runs myself and it, i haven't done Good anything close words, to that yeah. yeah and my legs are fine and and you're doing this so you're <laughs> you know you're an inspiration to everyone tell us about going up mount kilimanjaro because that was already a goal of yours yeah and then you, you weren't going to let a silly little thing like intensive care um <laughs> stop you doing that right yeah, absolutely. So I already set the intention to climb Kilimanjaro once again with a few clients of mine that they knew it would be an adventure as well as a stretch and it would mold them into a better version of themselves. And uh, it got put on hold because of my accident and it was cancelled. And when I came to, I just thought, you know what? What a perfect goal. What a perfect intention to, after having both of my legs taken from under me, broken, smashed into pieces, rebuilt, re-put together or put together again to metaphorically and literally climb a mountain where I can get to a summit and celebrate how far I've come. So I just, I couldn't think, I could not think of a better goal for myself to stand at the roof of Africa with my legs still mending being proud of everything that I had become over those 15 months. And of course, then as a coach and speaker, being able to share that message with others and encourage them to keep climbing their own mountains and summit their own experiences. I'm getting chills. Yeah, it's like the perfect metaphor as yeah. well, isn't it? For climbing the, the mountain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's the climbing the mountain is the perfect metaphor for facing mm. challenges and adversity. And mm. uncertainty, because there's no amount of certainty that comes with climbing a mountain. All you can guarantee is I'll take my next step. Yeah. Everything else is you're, you're, you're just hoping for the best. There's a word that you've already used about three or four times, which is a watchword of yours, which is intention and about how you always do things with intention. Right. And I think that's something that a lot of people probably don't do. I think a lot of people are just happy to kind of carry on and see what happens and let, let life almost guide them as opposed to really truly going after what they really want. What do you, how do you, how do you think about that? There's a great quote by uh, Henry David Thoreau and it goes, I think these are the exact words. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing. <laughs> mm. And I just absolutely believe that to the core. Look at any child, ask any child if they just want to be average. Not only will they say no, and you know, up to five, six, seven year old, but they won't understand what you mean. What what do you, what does settling mean? I don't understand. 
Mm. I don't understand what just good enough means. What, what does that mean? Kids only have one way to live, and that's to fully live in everything that they're doing. Mm. To fully cry, to fully laugh, to fully play, to fully live, to be curious, to be adventurous, to be playful. This is who we really are. Mm. And you know, if you think of who we are in, as liquid in a mug, as we become seven years old and eight years old and we start going to school, we start having all these things put on top of us, put on top of us, put on top of us. And we start to believe over time that actually life isn't meant to be adventurous. And it's when all those things get on top of us, we lose who we are. But I believe that I am here to remind people of who they are. And that is that childlike version of you that already exists in you. Living your best life or being extraordinary or going after what you really want, like you said, isn't about becoming some version of you that exists in the future. It's that part of you that you have lost. <laughs> Mm. powerful stuff and i believe that if we don't find that version of ourselves we're not able to come back to who we are to complete the cycle of our own hero's journey and that is the whole point of living life is about becoming who we can become in our one cycle or two cycle or nine lives of you know of our life like you said this is a man of many lives yeah, every time i yeah. go through a new challenge and experience i become a newer version of me i return a little bit closer i go a little bit closer to my truth mm. but my truth isn't something that lies in the future it'll manifest or we'll create our truth in the future but we've got to understand that our truth is actually already within us. And therefore, we have to be willing to do all of this work to keep one by one removing every layer, remove mm -hmm. every layer. It's not easy. It requires you to sit with yourself and meditate. And when you find time to say, or when you find yourself saying, I don't have time to meditate, you say, hey, shut up, sit down. And you overcome your own mind. It requires you to maybe go to therapy and work on trauma from your past. It requires you to look yourself in the mirror after your accident and say, I will not be a victim. It mm. requires you to face everything that is the result of your business not being where it is because of your, your own conditioning, of everything everyone has ever said to you. And the more you can keep uncovering these things, I feel like I've gone off on a tangent here, but the more you keep uncovering these layers, the more you become yourself the real version of you not the version of you that you think currently you can be but the real real version of you and the greatest gift that you can ever give the world is to just be the best you but not who you believe you can be it's this version of you mm. you've got to go deeper to get to that version of you and it's so true what you say, JP, when you think about, when you talk about reverting back to who we are as children and how we lived in this really authentic way. You know, you think about kids at Christmas and, you know, Father Christmas and that magic and that excitement and how we felt about it. And now we, we get older and we go, oh, Christmas is for the kids because we lose this magic in our lives and we want to have that sparkle and that joy and that feeling of pure delight and we we tend to think we can't have it anymore as adults don't we and that's something we need to re-unlock and we need to find that magic within us and totally embrace it absolutely and that comes down to obviously our thinking as a result of our conditioning mm -hmm. one thing i will say is two ways in which anyone can change their limited thinking don't use your thinking to change your thinking it won't work because you'll always come back to who you believe you are Right? The, most, the most powerful driving force in the world is to stay consistent with who we believe we are. Mm. So you can go to Tony Robbins and say, I am powerful. I am amazing. Da, da, da. But then you'll just go back to when times are stressful, when it's COVID, and you find yourself in times of uncertainty, you'll go back to at the core level who you believe you are. So what I will say is don't use your thinking to change your thinking. First, use your habits. 
This is why daily practices are so important mm -hmm. because our habits over time influence and impact who we become. I always say to people, and I have done for many times, or many years, many times in many years, should I say, don't judge me by what I do every so often. Judge me by what I do every day because that's who mm -hmm. I really am. You can't say that, you know, if Ryan goes running every day, you can't deny the fact that he's a runner. If Holly does a gratitude practice every morning, you can't say that Holly's not someone that is grateful because she shows up in this area every day. So one, use your habits to leverage your own habits and your rituals and your non-negotiables that are set in stone like the Ten Commandments to leverage the way you think. And they will. They will change the way you think. And then next after that is leverage your environment. Leverage your environment to change your thinking. Because if you're surrounded by champions, you'll start to think like a champion. Mm -hmm. Get on podcasts, go to events, go to seminars. Leverage the space around you on the external to influence the space within you on the internal. Mm. Oh, love that. Yeah. It's interesting you say about the non-negotiables. That's something that uh, we picked up from you the very first time that we saw you. And it's something which I've shared with our community ever since. Even now, members of our community, I say, here's the little thing. Print it off, write them down, tick them off as you go every day, like JP says, you know. <laughs> and we still do it as hey, well. Man, I've been teaching the same shit for 20 years. <laughs> hey, but it works. Yeah. If it's not broken, yeah, exactly. don't fix it. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> exactly. JP, I'd love to get your opinion on this because there's a lot of people at the moment who, of course, they're in the middle of a lockdown. They're stressed out. They're overwhelmed. They're homeschooling. Their businesses are closed and they feel worried, scared, unstable. And they're not sure what's happening and they're worried they won't recover. They're worried they won't bounce back from this. Now, you've obviously bounced back from huge, you know, huge issues and and, and obviously your accident to, to recover in the way that you had, which I actually read has been stated as miraculous by some doctors, which is amazing. What would you say are the best ways that they can focus on their future to bounce back from the adversity they're facing at the moment? How can they overcome this? How can they look forward to the future and see a brighter day? There's so much that I can say to this and what an incredibly, not just a good question, but a really relevant question to, to everything that we're facing right now. I'm going to try and keep it as concise as possible, but hopefully it's able, I'm able to get it across in a way that does it justice because these are very powerful uh, tools or ways of thinking. Number one is to let go of all expectation. Mm -hmm. I just was speaking on an event earlier today and I shared on this uh, online event that COVID can't let you down. Life can't let you down. Your relationship can't let you down. Your business can't let you down. The economy, the government, nothing can let you down. Nothing in life can let you down other than your expectation of how you believe it should be. Mm -hmm. And if we think about that very carefully, if you had no expectation of things going right, nothing can ever go wrong. Mm. Just that one thing. If you never expect life to go a certain way, you will just take everything for what it is. And when I woke up in hospital, the very first thing I said to myself, when I was very clear after day 10, day 11 intensive care, and I clearly understood what had happened to me, including hit and run and didn't find the driver, or sorry, the driver was arrested and um, my injuries. The first thing I said to myself was, it is what it is. Don't feel sorry for me. It is what it is. <laughs> Yes, I had an accident. Yes, I almost lost my life. But it was my choice to get on my bike. Mm. It was no one else's choice. It was my choice. So I'm not going to expect my life to be any other way. And I had that same attitude when it came to COVID. So how to protect yourself and I guess your life fitness, your state of readiness for attacking life in 2021. It's taking care of your mental, physical, and spiritual energy, which is everything by letting go of how you think your life should be and living 100% in appreciation for what is and what isn't and let go of everything and anything that makes you feel bad. Number one thing, expectation. Number two, it's to live only looking at the headlights. I'll explain. Driving at night, 
if you turn your headlights off and you're only thinking of where you've got to go, your intentions, your goals, and you can't even see two meters in front of you, what's your energy going to be like? Not very good, overwhelmed, stressed, ultimately in fear, right? If anyone ever tries to or tried to when they were younger like me, you know, turn the lights off, turn the lights off. Hey, you, know, you <laughs> last like three seconds with your lights off. It's pretty damn scary. If we don't know where we're going, it's scary. But if we don't know even what our next steps are, the fear is all consuming. So only look at the headlights. If your headlights are on, even if you're lost, even if you're lost in the grand picture of your life, if you know what you're focusing on right now and just what your next two or three steps are, you can have certainty. You can feel safe. You can operate from a calm and collected and cool place. So when it comes to goal setting in 2021, especially in business, number one, know your outcome. Know the destination in your GPS. Know, you know your desired outcomes that you want to achieve, your life, business, relationship, whatever. But once you have the clarity and the conviction about where you're heading, put it aside or put it here, put it here in your heart, and then take your intention and keep it there and then move your attention to what my next steps are today. And just remain focused on what's in front of you. Why is this so important? Not only will it reduce fear, stress, and overwhelm, but it will take your certainty through the roof. Because most people can achieve what they want to in a day. But most people achieve what, can achieve what they plan to achieve in a day but overestimate or underestimate what they can achieve in a year. So that creates uncertainty, not knowing where you're going, how you're going to get there, if you'll get there. And in the movie, The Secret, they shared a quote by Martin Luther King. You don't have to see the whole staircase. You've just got to take the first step. Number one rule for 2021. If you're listening to this and you have a pen with you, write this down. In times of uncertainty, at least have the certainty of who I am. In times of uncertainty, at least have the certainty of who I am. Certainty comes from clarity. I'm even writing that down, JP, because it's uh, just that I think it's an incredibly powerful bit of information that you've given there. And I was momentarily taken back to our one-to-one -one coaching that we had out in Thailand that time and just how mm. incredibly powerful your words are and how you almost sort of reach into somebody's soul a little bit and just it's like you're speaking so intently and so deeply to somebody that it's just quite quite awe-inspiring to be around you JP because you're just such an incredible energy and I'm really hoping that the people that are listening to this right now are really taking note of what you're saying because this, the, this is the stuff that makes the difference you can sit and you can read stuff and you can dip your toe in the water. But unless you fully immerse yourself in these concepts and you embrace them and you decide to make that change, you're not going to move forward. And there's some real, real wonderful, uh, powerful information here. And we've we've watched your journey, JP. We've seen you've had your, your good days and your bad days. And, and I was going to ask you what your focus was, but you know, you shared it's it was that mountain at the end, but what else has kept you focused? What else has kept you moving through this incredible journey you've had? Great question. And I'll bring it back to what I just shared, which you're right, is really powerful. So please listen up. <laughs> Number one, be very clear on your intention. Number two, be very clear on where you've got to put your attention. So for me over the last year, my intention was to summit the fourth highest mountain in the world and the highest point of Africa. That was my intention. My attention every day was how can I make progress today? That I'm not even simplifying or exaggerating the point. Literally for one year, my only goal was how can I make progress today? And that's the only thing that I allowed in my attention. And you guys know I'm an open book. I'm very transparent. And even when I shared, you know, days of challenges and stuff, when I would wake up feeling challenged or have a night of PTSD and, you know, the other night still 18 months on, I had a night where I had five dreams in a row 
of people chasing me and trying to kill me. And then I woke up and for two hours, just in my nasal cavity here or nasal, whatever this area of my nose, I could just smell the tubes, the morphine, and this intense smell of intensive care. But it was the same thing. I woke up, I had that intense smell. I came and sat in this chair in my office. I took three deep breaths and I said, based on how I am today, what does progress look like for me today? That's all that matters. You're never going to be the best. You're never going to be able to operate as the best that there is. But it's our, it is our responsibility to those we love, to our employees, to our team, our followers, to do our best. Even if doing our best means practicing self-care. That's it. So I know where I'm heading. My next intention is three Ironman in 2021, Ironman triathlons, one extreme Ironman, which is a double Ironman race, which is like five miles swim, 200 mile cycle and two marathons back to back or one after the other uh, to go back to Kilimanjaro. And this month I want to do as many half marathons as I can. Those are my intentions. But I promise you this. My only daily goal is to move my mind, my body, and my heart in the best way that I can day by day through walking, exercising, consuming knowledge, having engaging inspirational conversations, meditating, self-care, and self-love. That's all I care about. I don't care about the marathons right now because I know if I serve myself today, and I just focus on the headlights in front of me, and I'm clear on my intention behind my attention, I know I'll get there. And I have unwavering faith about that. I have no doubt in my mind that you'll get there as well. I mean, and a double Iron Man, that sounds like a sort of thing any normal, rational uh, human being would do. So one, wonderful for that as well. Um, look, there's going to be a lot of people here that are going to be listening today who are thinking, well, that's all that's all good and well for you, JP, because you are, you know, a professional athlete and you've been a PT um, and all these other amazing things, uh, you know, training elite people and all these sorts of things. Or rather the normal person that they just can't even get their backside off the couch easily. What is the one thing? And you spoke about just getting a little bit better. I really like the concept, you know, 1% better. If you can just get 1% better all the time, then you're going to you're going to magnify your life in ways that you can't imagine. But what moves the needle, would you say, the most for someone who needs to take that step to get started, just to get on the path to that self, not even self-mastery, but just a better version of themselves? What moves the needle the most, would you say? Don't look more than 24 hours ahead in your life. Just look at what's your next move. You can't control three months from now, two months from now, one month from now. The only thing you have control of is what you choose to do next. Make better choices. This might push some people's buttons, but I'm not here to flatter or please anyone. If you're choosing to go for a run today, you're choosing to be fit tomorrow. If you're choosing to overeat or eat crap today, you're choosing to be fat tomorrow. Everything that we become tomorrow is a result of something that we have chosen to think, to do, or to be today. So the short answer is, live your life 24 hours at a time with clear intention and attention, and just be more responsible around the choices that you are making in every moment, because it's those little choices in those moments that are going to create the big results in your life. Because what we do consistently over time, not only defines, but it determines who we become in the long term. You have just absolutely it's knocked the nail on the head there. In fact, knocked the nail right out through the wood, through the wood, not just into the wood there. Because I think that that's just, you couldn't have put that any, any better in all areas of life as well. You know, in, in work, in business, in fitness, in health, in families, in values, in love, in absolutely everything. Yeah. I mean, if, if we look at business, right, here's a, here's a hard truth for some people. If you're choosing to not 
make that call, you're choosing to be poor. It's that simple. If there is a conversation that you know you can have or engage in and you don't take it, you're choosing to be poor. But if you choose to pick up the phone, you're choosing to be wealthy. It's a choice. It's always a choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, and at the moment, again, let's just, let's bring this back to what's going on right now. And a lot of people are in a situation, there's gonna be a lot of people listening to us today who are experiencing massive overwhelm because they've got a business and they're trying to still make the world's turn, even though they, they're not allowed to open or they're mega restricted or they've been shut down by the government. And they've also now got a homeschool their kids, right? Which, hey, no one signed up for, right? Now, all of a sudden, you've got to be a teacher. So good luck with that. And and it's just like everything coming on top of them. Massive, massive overwhelm. Can't see the wood for the trees. For the people that are in that situation, and I know there's going to be an awful lot of them that are listening, what the heck is their next move? You mentioned just think about your next move. What is there? What is their next move? What could you say to someone who is just feeling like, you know, the walls are closing in on them? So I have to go back to the first thing that I mentioned. Let go of your expectation of how you think your life should be. Someone that I'm working with at the moment, they started off on a journey of, um, I want to do this, but my kids and but my business and but my business and their own growth came as a result of being fully accepting of everything that is and saying, you know what? I'm more at peace now than I ever have been in my life because I'm no longer saying I'm not this because of, I'm choosing to say that I am this in spite of. Not, oh, I'm not, I'm not getting the results I want because of, choosing to say I get the results that I want in spite of. And that's just an attitude adjustment. So one, let go of expectation. And then two, I I think we did a newsletter or something about this the other day. I said, this came came to me as a download when I was meditating about three days ago. It will never be the right time and the circumstances will never be perfect. But if you keep waiting for it to be the right time or the right circumstances, you'll be waiting for the rest of your life. Regardless of how things are right now, just keep waiting moving forward. When I'm climbing Kilimanjaro, when anyone's climbing any mountain, you can't guarantee that there won't be struggles, winds, rain, snowfall, chill, falls, trips. There are no guarantees. The only guarantee is that if you don't keep moving forward, you will die because everything in life is moving forward or dying, perishing, getting better or getting worse, appreciating or depreciating. So screw the circumstances, let go of how you think it should be, be resourceful and forgiving and accepting and surrendering to what is, and then metaphorically and literally put on your shoes every day and just do your best where you are, how you are with what you have to make it better day by day by day by day and the better we get the better we get meaning the more we can make better decisions over time the better we will get the easier it will get for you to start making these decisions but the more we procrastinate the better we get the more we judge the better we get ultimately at the end of the day Why I am here, Ryan and Holly, is I am here in the service of others to help people master themselves, to have a higher level or an extraordinary level of life fitness, mental fitness, physical fitness, and spiritual fitness, to be able to live a life of inner mastery so that the outer world is a reflection of everything that they've become within themselves. And for you to be able to master anything in your life, You've got to be able to go from the idea level of mastery. Oh, yeah, this is really great talk, JP. Thank you very much. I'll try this living my life by 24 hours. It's just an idea. You've got to put that into practice, which is the second phase of mastery. 
And only when you've practiced it enough, for some of you, it'll be one week, some of you, it'll be one year, some of you, it'll be 10 years, eventually, there will be a switch. And you will realize, and some of you have already done this in your life in different areas, you'll realize that you no longer need to practice that thing consciously because it's a part of who you are. You practice gratitude for 15 years and then you woke up one day and you realized you could never be a victim again because you're just too damn grateful. And you say, I am grateful because I am speaks to your identity. Maybe it was one day you put your shoes on out of frustration, a moment of enough is enough, and you just said, screw my circumstances, I'm going to run every day. And then you reach a point where you say, hey, I haven't run today and everything feels out of whack. Everything feels out of alignment. Oh, I've got to go running. It's because you practiced it so well for so long with discipline and consistency that it's now a part of who you are. In this moment that we're in right now, we're all facing our own challenges. Business challenges, financial relationship challenges, being locked in with our loved ones and our family. You can say, oh, I would be better if... And then put idea, 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 idea in your head. Well, you're never going to get to have that in your life until you start putting it into practice. But it has to follow that path. You can't go from great idea to, oh, let me now master that. No, you've got to be willing to do the work. And the work required right now is not comfortable. It is not easy. It requires you to get uncomfortable. It requires you to embrace uncertainty, to embrace failure, to, to seek to challenge yourself every day. It requires you to cry a little, scream a little, shout a little. But if it was easy, we'd all be running around the streets with beads around our necks, saying namaste, levitating, because we're so spiritually enlightened. We can all get to a level of self-actualization where we transcend our own limitations in mind, body, and heart. But there's no way to get there other than climb the mountain. And if you're willing to put in the work, embrace the rain, embrace the fear, embrace the cliffs, embrace the discomfort of climbing the mountain, you will get to the top and that is where the center of your heart lies. That is where your personal power lies, at the top of the mountain. And if anyone chooses to, to take that journey, I will always love to see you at the top. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's just pure, pure soul speaking there. I just feel like it's just incredibly powerful. And I just, I, like I said, I just hope anybody who's listening to this carries this away with them because it could be life transformational. If you decide to take those steps, it really can. So JP, what, what can we expect from you next? I know you've talked about the, uh, the, the fitness goals. Uh, what else can we look forward to in the world of JP de Villiers right now? Because we are watching eagerly to see hmm. what mountain you overcome next. So I don't look, uh, uh, thank you for that question. I don't look too far in the future. I never really did. And I was never really able to set 10 year or five year goals even especially after my accident. When you're 37 years old and you realize all of a sudden, man, I almost died. You realize, damn, life is so, 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 so short. And I'm not shying away from any fitness challenges. So I'm very aware that my life could end at any moment. So I'm only going to answer that question on who I want to be in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm constantly simplifying what I do and who I do it for. Because I don't want to live to work. I want to work to live. I want to work to be adventurous and travel and oh, travel. So 1990s. Um, I know. How I miss You're that. preaching and, to the converted. Yeah, exactly. You guys are probably in straight jackets right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm simplifying what I do professionally. And I'm amplifying how I show up generally in life. And really just getting clear on what it is that I stand for. And I've done a lot of spiritual work over the last year from plant medicine to living in silence to living with Shaolin monks. And I'm very clear on what I want to stand for. And when I die, whether that's next year or 100 years from now, I want to be very sure that what they will put on my gravestone before 
or between my birth date and my death date is that JP stood for truth and love. And everything under that or beyond that is, I guess, how I want to show up in my life. But, but that's all I want to stand for. I want to know at the end of 2021 that what I stood for was truth and love. Truth meaning speaking what I believe is the truth and, and love being, being kind and compassionate to every single being, including myself, including being vegan, including being a plant-based athlete, including I'm going to be volunteering at a, an animal sanctuary and sharing messages of love and kindness and hosting global meditations. And, but it's, it's all just noise. You know, really, who I want to be this year is simplify what I do and who I do it for and what I'm going to do. And I would just this year, I just want to stand for truth and love and, and do my very best to do that through service to others, through coaching and through speaking and helping my clients liberate themselves and question what is possible for them by continuously upping my game. That's why I do these marathons and these challenges, because I work with people that know they can play a better game. I just help them play it quicker. And how can I do that if I'm not upping my game, if I know I can be better? So more conversations, more challenges, <laughs> and uh, yeah, more growth. I mean, you speak about showing up and you've certainly showed up for us today. Mm -hmm. And we really, really appreciate that so much you coming on because you're a very in-demand individual. So we really appreciate you making time in your schedule to share your message with us today and with our whole community. And I know there's going to be people that are listening to this today who are going to be thinking, hmm, that's uh, changed everything for me because it is a mindset, uh, mind shift change. And some of the things that you've said today have been just so relevant to, I know how a lot of people are going to be thinking right now. So if someone wants to work with you, JP, and by the way, they should, because both Holly and I have, and you've had a massive impact. Well, I know I, you didn't know I was going to say any of this, but you've had a massive impact on our lives. We've gone through a couple of your programs and um, we can't sing your praises highly enough. So um, how can people work with you if they want to look into that further? What have you got coming up that they could get involved with? Well, first of all, that's very kind. I, I do the same work in three different capacities, but it's all the same. I teach self and life mastery and mental, physical, and spiritual fitness, how to master one's mind, body, and heart. And as a result of that, how to be, as a leader, how to be stronger, fitter, and happier. And the three different capacities are a one-to-one -one executive coaching, business owners, entrepreneurs, high-level managers and executives, C-suite clients, and that I don't promote online. So you can just reach out to me, DM me anyway or anywhere publicly. If you're looking for a full immersion coaching experience, I have a three-month coaching program, which is focused on one thing. Who can I become in three months? And deciding whatever that looks like for you and then having the accountability, the network, the tools, and the teachings, me as the coach, to help you get there and close that gap as quickly as possible. The next one starts on the 15th of February. It's a three-month journey where you work with me and 20 other people or 20 other clients or 19 other clients. And uh, yeah, that's it. They can go to my website, jeanpedervilliers.com. You'll find it there. You can once again uh, message me. If I don't pick it up, one of my team will. We always get back to people, even if it's not immediately. Even if it's three weeks later, we always make sure we get back to people. And then if you're not quite ready to jump in a, a fully immersive coaching program slash mastermind, then I have another option, which is a community called Best Life. MBA, and that is a monthly subscription where you get access to me on Zoom every week. And every day we run fitness classes, meditations, and mindset coaching. Uh, and the desired outcome is to get you to change your thinking, your habits, and your environment so that you can keep growing, evolving, and becoming. We will be sure to share the necessary links in the show notes so people can easily find all of that. And I know from my personal experience of working with you, I think it's that 
you've got to change what's going on on the inside of you as an individual first before anything outside of you is going to change. And I think a lot of us don't take that step of looking inside first. And actually, when you start to do some work on yourself, then actually that's the turning point. That's when it can all change for you. At least that was certainly the experience that I had. And, and even if you didn't know it, you were uh, actually quite a big part of that. So again, thank you for that on a personal level. And thank you for being an epic guest today as well. Mm, yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I know this is going to be so incredibly powerful for our community. And I can honestly say from all of them, before they've even heard it, we appreciate everything you've shared with us today. It's been outstanding. Oh, thank you guys so much. And to everyone listening, thanks for listening. And you know, if at any point through this conversation, you took a deep breath, just know that that thing spoke to your soul. And that was what you came here for. And last little message, we're all looking to master our lives, but just remember always that life mastery is an inside out game, not the other way around. If you're not there yet, whatever that means for you, stop going outside, spend more time going inside, whether that's meditation, coaching, podcasts, masterminds, events, keep doing the work on the inner world and the outer world will change because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Thanks, JP. 